Welcome to the Right to Reason podcast. I am your host, Robert Stanley. Today, we are asking the question, is God good? It's the Right to Reason podcast. This episode of the Right to Reason podcast is brought to you by our patrons and contributors like me. We have all recognized the value of the unrestrained marketplace of ideas and have decided to make a difference. You can make a difference too. Contribute at patreon.com forward slash right and learn more about your right to reason at the right to reason.com. Your activism is appreciated. Luke Larson, how's it going, man? It's going good, Robert. How are you? I'm cool. So you just graduated seminary, and now you're all hot and fired up for Jesus, right? Yeah, of course, Robert. <laughs> so, like, what <laughs> what kind of God would you say you believe in? I've noticed these conversations, they start, and then, you know, the, the Christian guy says something vague, and then the atheist says something particular, and then the Christian guy goes, yeah, but that's not the kind of God I believe in. And then, you know, they bounce back and forth for a while. Uh, attacking each other on things that you know they don't even believe like it's almost like the atheist starts straw manning the believer right from the start so i think it's fair yeah. is is god omniscient does he know everything yeah yeah is he is he omnipotent yep now now when you say yep do you mean like maximally all-powerful or yeah like so something? of course he can't do anything that's illogical that contradicts itself like he can't lift a rock that's he can't make a rock too heavy for him to lift, kind of thing, right? right? right. But anything that's possible, he can do it. So, okay. like, building uh, a world out of nothing kind of thing doesn't contradict itself. I'm okay with that, but just to kind of curious, why can't he do that? Why can't he do that? Yeah, why Why is his power not beyond the laws of logic? Well, the laws of logic aren't something that was created. That's, that's just a, a fabric of reality. That's just how things operate. So even though... God creates the universe. He created time, space, and all that. It's not like he creates logic. Logic is just how things are. So I can't say 2 plus 2 is 5, because if I have two things here and I add 2, there's unless I add something from an outside source, yeah, it's, that's just what it is. I want to get uh, on to like the, the yeah. other facets of God, but I apologize for the rabbit trail, but you have me curious. So... so just put a pen in that. We'll come right back to it. But it, yep. what other things exist that weren't created by God? What other things exist that weren't created by God? Right. Like you, you're saying he didn't make the laws of yep. logic. They just are. And I'm wondering, like, what else just exists that wasn't created? And I'd be kind of curious where that came from, much like God. Yeah. Well, like, seeing that uh, like, I believe God was just there, right? There, no yeah. beginning, no cause, whatever you want to call it. Uh Things that would go along with that, uh, the idea of, I think you might have heard this, like, so the idea of like numbers, reason, and all that, these things uh, I believe to be pre-existent uh, along with God, but they have no causal force or causal effect. So it's not like they could have caused something. So if you're like an atheist or agnostic and you say, okay, well, God's not there, they're still there, maybe they caused something to happen and they put the universe into effect, uh, the things that I believe that have always been there have no causal no ability to cause any universe to be formed or anything like that. Did sin exist already? Well, no, because sin would be uh, something that's opposite or in contrary to God's character. Before God created anything, it is simply him and any, uh, like I said, uh, like numbers. Like uh, good, the logical... good and evil. Did, did, did good and evil already exist? See, that is a, it's interesting because... I would say evil didn't exist because but evil is something that right. God God's wouldn't good. do. If it's just God is the only free agent being, then of course he wouldn't do it because it's against him. So then he uh, had to have created evil. Is that fair? No, I wouldn't say that. He created the possibility for evil <laughs> okay. through creating a free agent being. I'm going to use that one. I, I get in trouble for drunk driving. Be like, I wasn't <laughs> drunk driving. I created the possibility for drunk driving, Your Honor. But I don't know. If that, I, don't, I don't think that would work. But but we'll we'll give God a yeah. pass on that one. It, Isaiah did not yeah. give him that. That's pass. a whole other conversation we could be having. But yeah. But 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 Isaiah said it flat out. Uh, Isaiah forty five seven. I form the light. I create darkness. I make peace. I create evil. I the Lord do all these things. It seems it seems fairly clear biblically that God and I don't agree with you. Well, when he 
So if I create, like, so he is light. Let's say he didn't create it. Let's just say that's what was there, just for our purposes here, good being light. Uh, if he creates something that will inevitably do evil, he didn't, he himself didn't do that evil. He himself did not commit that darkness or sin, but he created the thing that causes darkness. Yeah. So but you in said relation to that, yes, he created darkness. He created evil, but he has never done evil. But, but he you, cannot sit. You used the word thing. inevitably. Did, did you actually intend that word? Because I would agree with you that it was inevitable <laughs> with the way that he set up Adam and Eve and the garden and, and, and mankind. And all that. According to that story, it seems fairly inevitable. Did, did you intend to say that word? I did, but let me just be, let's clarify something here. Just because I say something and I believe something doesn't mean that's the whole Christian, not every oh, yeah, Christian yeah, believes yeah. that. I do know a few Christians who say that if, let's say, that Satan didn't come into the garden, that snake, then Adam and Eve would never have sinned. Some people say that. Uh, some people say that they would have sinned anyways, just yeah. maybe taken longer or different they way or something know. like that. Yeah, nobody nobody could know that, you know, but, but I'm yeah. with you there. But if I set up something that has an inevitable result based on my actions, am I responsible? So I would say, like now we're getting into what is God responsible for and uh, what are his duties with the creation and yeah, is which, it all right that let's which, start certain things happen? Clear, I, don't, right? I don't think that that's off the topic of God because the next one I was going to ask is, is he omnibenevolent? Just like, you know, does he know everything? Is he all powerful? Uh, whether or not yeah. he's everywhere, I don't know. We could probably have fun with that one. Like, is he, does he watch me masturbate? <laughs> yeah, no, you know, like, I've I don't actually know. been having a conversation with some of my Christian friends, and we disagree on that one, but yeah. On the omnibenevolence or on the omnipresence? Omnipresence. Yeah, because yeah, he's not in hell, right? That's, yeah. a, that's an easy one. It, that's the thing. That's, that's the conversation, but let's leave that right. for after we get uh, these yeah. first couple of thoughts. But, but, right? but I, think, I think the line of question about whether he created evil or not uh, is a perfect segue into the next question of, is he omnibenevolent, which is uh, a pretty classical Christian teaching. To, yeah. To that point, if I do something that causes an inevitable result, am I responsible for what happens? I facilitated that action, right? Yeah, I know what you're saying, but okay, uh, hopefully it's all right. But I'm going to just respond to your question with a question, right? Get very very Jesus of you. Right there. But anyways, <laughs> uh, so let's say you you have children, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So let's say one of your kids goes into the store and steals something. Mm -hmm. He comes back home, and you find out he stole something. You say, like, like, what the heck are you doing, man? Like, don't steal. That's wrong. Inevitably, a cop comes by. They found the video. And they come to you and say, hey, your kid stole this. Stole this. this is your fault. You're being held accountable for this crime. Is that – would you say that's okay? Are you responsible because he stole something? To some extent, um, I would be held responsible. To uh, some extent. But would you legally, be put yeah. into jail or – Get that kind of punishment. Not, not as the same as me doing it, no, because yeah. it wasn't necessarily inevitable. I didn't uh, set up a scenario that the child had no choice but to break the law. In that case, I would be held responsible. So that that's actually, I, I appreciate your analogy. I, I see your point, uh, free will, what have you. Uh, my child has its own agency. I, I can follow you there. But that's why I was kind of focusing on the word inevitable, um, yeah. not to just just pick one thing and, and no, no, uh, get yeah, into semantics. But if it was inevitable, then that's not the same as your analogy, I don't think. Um, and I, I would agree that it was inevitable. Yeah. Well, even though it's inevitable, he like what I'm trying to get at, he did not do that act. So he is not, it's not as if he committed an evil act or anything like He did not sin in that sense, even though for God to sin is kind of impossible because sinning is to be contrary to God. I know what you're saying, yeah. If he does something bad, is it bad? In other if words, if he does something, something that bad, we would, is it bad? Yeah, like something we would define as as evil, um, like genocide or something like that, uh, rape, um, murder. I don't know all the bad stuff. If he does any yeah. of those things, does he get a free pass because it's like, well, he he can do whatever he wants because he made everything. Well, okay, we have to start looking into why are these things in place? Why are these things bad? Right. Uh, so rape, of course, is bad because you are forcing yourself upon another against their will, and they have, they didn't do anything. You're just, yeah, you know. Uh, again, murder, it's purely out of hate. You have a grudge against them, and you just go and end their life. You have no right to do so. You don't own that person. You, you have no bearing on their lives except for now you came and killed them. I think the rules, 
uh, for God are slightly different, following with the fact that uh, it's still wrong to do things out of hate, and it's still wrong to just, for no reason, come up and murder someone and do things like that. Mm -hmm. But I do believe God has some uh, authority. He has some claim to be allowed to do things that humans aren't. Okay. Uh, as if if I made a sculpture like, out of clay, I would be allowed to break it. But if someone else came by and threw it against the wall, I'd be pretty pissed kind of thing. Right, right. If good existed before he created anything, then does that mean that uh, when he does good, that he's following an already existing axiom? Or is it good because he does it? Euthyphro, you know? Well, yeah, I've, well, just getting down this rabbit trail and recognizing that our original topic would be, does God exist? You're using the term good and bad and evil a lot, but mm -hmm. that doesn't really that doesn't really work on your side of the scale, does it? Something being good and something being evil? Okay, so we're going to come back to defining God's omnibenevolence momentarily, I'm guessing, but your question to me is, how can I have morals if I don't believe in God? Is that kind of where you're going? Yeah, objective morals, which this is just good. Not, not saying this is favorable or this, I find it distasteful because of... Uh, my herd mentality or anything like that, but this is actually wrong. This is evil and wicked. I do believe in objective morality. I think we would have that okay. in common by how we define our morals. I don't. I would go out on a limb, and once again, this is this is why I like to work out what kind of God you believe, because I don't think you believe in objective morals. I think really? you actually you actually believe in in subjective morality, even though you might accuse me of the same. But but <laughs> the basis of morality, whenever you bring that term up to me is is discussing humanity and whether or not it's flourishing whether or not it's happy whether or not it's successful in a utilitarian sense so i know that giving orange juice to you could be a very good thing and giving battery acid to you would be a very bad thing that's yeah. that's good and bad for you objectively i don't have to know what's in the glass or not but if I do, yeah. then I'm the one responsible for doing the good or bad. That's now my agency. Um, if you don't but, know what's in the glass, uh, it's not necessarily. Why is it wrong for you to harm me? Because like, yeah, that would be hard. Yeah, that would sure. that would harm me and probably end up killing me if you give me enough. But why is it wrong for you to do that? Can't you like? Don't you have right over your own body and what you choose to do? And why does it really matter if you inflict pain right. on another? The, the old uh, the old follow the nap kind of libertarian thinking of you know i can swing my arm as long as it doesn't make contact with your nose uh, would be would be something similar to why harm is uh, good or bad it would be violating your rights it wouldn't align with human flourishing if that's what we're calling morals now if you call it something else like morals come from god in that case uh, i wouldn't have morals I, I wouldn't i wouldn't be able to comment to that at all because that's not what yeah. i consider morals did, did that yeah, okay. is that sufficient would you say that that just to say like where we both come from as far as right and wrong? Well, I wouldn't consider it objective still just because as people grow and change and society adapts at different yeah. uh, outer pressures, I think morality itself changes in each society, right? Sure. Like, I would say most societies have a, a generic ruling of, okay, it's bad to be a coward. It's bad. You can't just have any woman you want or have any guy you want. But I think it, it does change in some senses where, okay, uh, can you have one spouse or multiple? Do I have to stand up? Like, is it wrong? Is it evil? Or whatever you want to call it. For me not to save someone's life and protect them? Well, like, I'm not going to be harming. Like, things like that where, where we're, we're getting in the I weeds do believe on that. it changes. I, I think, I think a, good one, a good one for you that, would, that you might like better than where you were going, uh, slavery. There was a point that having slaves wasn't bad as far as the common ethos of, of the time, right? And now we know that that was bad. Now, were those yeah. people equally evil as they would be today <laughs> at that time? Uh, no, yeah. not in the way that we would uh, judge another person's behavior because we have, we have a, a more uh, evolved uh, sociological sense of right and wrong, right, today. Um, but was it objectively wrong? Yes, that was always wrong. Are there things that we are currently doing that are objectively wrong, but it's not necessarily viewed in our society as bad. Like the practices of factory farming that I'm sure both you and I would say, man, there, there's just some really messed up stuff going on in the world and we are contributing to it ourselves. That would be a perfect example of something that right now it probably wouldn't be viewed as bad if you and I had a hot dog, but 
yeah. in the future, people would look back at us and go, wow, those people were really, really evil. But did did right and wrong evolve? Uh, no, the, the objectivity of whether or not that was what was best for humanity or even for how to treat other forms of agency, other forms of intelligence like animals, uh, those kinds of things were objectively right or wrong all along. Okay, yeah, I find that interesting that you hold that view, though. It's, I don't, yeah. It's not typical. Most atheists yeah. go with with a more uh, moral relativism route, um, yeah. and I, to me, it, it's a little bit of semantics just because it's like, well, what is it that we're talking about is right or wrong? I think a perfect example is the old uh, uh, John Stuart Mill. Uh, you know, it, it evolved into the trolley car scenario, but the but the original one is uh, you're sitting in a boat. You got kids too? Uh, no, I don't. All right, you're sitting, but you don't have to have kids to imagine the, the situation. You're sitting yeah. in a boat. Uh, your child is uh, drowning. In a lake on your left five children that are not yours are drowning in the same lake on your right of this boat which way do you take your boat left or right uh okay, and, yeah, and yeah. a common moral relativist argument is well for you it's your child and blah blah blah, blah. and, and I, I go a different route no objectively going right is is uh the more moral act i'll be damned if i do it <laughs> you know like like that's <laughs> yeah, the difference yeah. is i I will make immoral decisions, or I guess that would be better to say unethical. I don't know. That we kind of left morality and went to ethics, but but I will make an unethical decision when I want, like yeah. according yeah. to my own sense of uh, consequentialism, right? Well, and, yeah, I agree with that. For example, like even though I hold to certain morals and ethics like, pertaining to the Bible, it's not like I do them. It's not like I do them all the time. That doesn't change the fact that I believe those things are sure are ethical, but I I don't do them. So like yeah, I know what you're saying. So so to circle back, I, th I think you you see where I'm coming from. But to circle back where where you're coming from and God's morality, if He didn't create good, then when He does good, He is following the same rules that we are more or less. They might apply differently. Like you said, He owns us, so He can throw us as His creation against the wall, like your analogy, you know, and and destroy us or whatever. But not as if He does. Not as if he just arbitrarily starts killing people. I'm saying he still has a purpose, but yes, I think he has a right to his creation as he sees fit, although he respects us for some reason. Then why do we need God to be good? Okay, so asking why do you need to be God to be good, I feel like you have to... No, I do have a bias because I most of the things I on this topic come from the bible on it but sure, that's fair. let's take that I, out I and just try to go purely the bible off of... one, so it's my fault <laughs> that's okay but like why do why do i need god to be good if good exists anyway i would say you need it, god it, to it be exists good separate because from him. it is a calling to something higher if it if it were not for god i feel not that i believe in the selfish gene completely but i do believe that lots of things people do are for one's benefit like if i were to if someone's life was going to die let's say two people were going to die over there if i didn't jump in the way or if i didn't push them out of the way i'd have to give up my life and if i didn't have a higher call like if i didn't believe like i was like it, it didn't really matter in the long run like after death there's nothing really to it i probably wouldn't give up my life for those two people because i would just be gone yeah, uh, but but if I so I do believe if I give a I, I do believe guy, more of a spiritual explanation, but we'll leave it at this so we can both kind of work with it. Okay, if I give a homeless guy a sandwich, did I do good? Even though I don't even believe in God, I didn't do any. I didn't do it for yeah. the glory of my Lord and Savior. I just gave a homeless dude a sandwich. Yeah. Okay, so I don't yeah. need God to be good. I'd say okay, so you don't need God to do a good act, but let's say I would put in the words: you need God to some extent to do it out of purely good motivations. Like, I believe people, no matter, Christian, not Christian, uh, atheist, whatever, whatever you want to call it, I do believe everyone can do good things, and I do believe everyone has good motivations. But if you don't mind me quoting something from the Bible, because I think it Please just do. works well with it, the things, my, my good intentions often come out evil. Like, I have a good intention in my mind, but out through my hands, evil comes out. Or... Maybe not a purely good motivation. Maybe something selfish or anything like that. So good is not just an act for you. It's also a state of being that you have to have God to in order to obtain. Well, I, yeah, because I, I see, like, by the definition I go by for Christians, I wouldn't say for you, but the definition for Christians, it would be uh, you, the act you're doing, the motivation is to serve God and, uh, like, uh, 
there's a verse in the Bible that says, if you don't do it for God, like it is, it's not good. Right. right. Like, uh, uh, yeah. So, but like, I the, would not hold you to that standard. If you don't believe in God, a good act is good, right? The act is good, well, but I'm not necessarily you have to good. Keep your mind cold, totally clean or anything like that. I wouldn't hold anything to that. You, you do realize that essentially what you're saying is you think you're better than me. No, I honestly I view Christians as worse than others, <laughs> and because they're so morally <laughs> deprived, they have to go to God and say, "Oh my goodness, wow, I suck." Oh, come doesn't on. say every Christian sucks, but for That's my just life, anyway. That doesn't. <laughs> you actually think you have like divine goodness inside of you? You just said like it's a it's a part of your your essence. I think goodness. everyone has that. I think everyone no, has. No, you you <laughs> now you're contradicting yourself. A minute ago, when I gave that homeless guy a sandwich, I was doing a good yeah. act, but I didn't have good in me, and it wasn't for God. That was but, the issue. Yeah, if you don't, okay, but that's why I said uh, for a Christian standard, hold like. Why would you do something for God? If you don't believe him or you don't serve him, like you wouldn't do something for God. That's just not something you would do. But that's totally different yeah. from my point of saying you do. Admit it, dude. Come on. You think there's like some like special, magical, spiritual goodness that's inside your heart, whatever heart means, but you know, inside you that I don't have. And you have to you have to see that that's a little bit arrogant. And I'm not, I'm no, not saying I, you're coming off that I'm not way. You're a nice me, though. guy. Like, but... I would say, like, for a Christian, I'd say it's the Holy Spirit. I would say I am worse. Like, my heart, if you want to call it that, is worse. But that's be because it's worse, I'd be like, okay, God, I need you to do this work through me. Or I need you to do this, right? If you kind of get that. Yeah, like, that's nothing not really to do with what my I was actual, to, uh, I wasn't referring to whether my or not... calendar goodness, but God's. Yeah, but, but I wasn't referring to whether or not God helps you with stuff. I was talking okay. about... You having Jesus Christ in your heart. Yeah. You have some kind of essence of goodness in you that I don't have, right? I would not say an essence of... <clears throat> I'm sure you wouldn't. That was my words. But put in your words. But you, but, oh, yeah. but the idea, you, you, I'm sure you agree with. You basically just said that a minute ago. If I did, I'm sorry. Let me, let me try to rephrase it. Because if I did say that... Then I'm going to apologize because well, I I don't believe you didn't you that didn't a specifically or any say person it. is superior in a way to another of a different belief. I think or you do, Luke. I think I think all Christians do, and that's kind of that's that's a thing with Christianity is we are special. It even goes you know as far as Calvinists where they're like we are chosen by God, right? And Arminians are like, well, we're, we might be chosen, but we could reject them. But I'm special because I accepted them. You know, like either way, there's always like this special thing, and and, Wait, and why is it evolved out question, of Judaism. Why is it special to choose him, though? Why? What? Why is that? Because special? you made the right choice. But but the only reason, like the right choice, is just acknowledging that I suck. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's acknowledging better. I need help. That's not like moral superiority. That's just saying, <laughs> like I'm throwing in the towel. I need someone else's help. That's fair. I like the way you, I like the way you put it. But but that's still better than being an arrogant atheist asshole that doesn't think they need Christ. Well, okay, not it doesn't need to be like. There's multiple ways to look at it. One scenario, it's not arrogant because maybe you don't know or you don't, you haven't uh, been convinced, which I think is atheism, hmm. that either God exists, you haven't been convinced that you aren't meeting the moral standards. Like, like what you just said, you believe in objective morality, but different than what would be presented in the Bible. So why would you follow that in the Bible? Just, just because you don't think you need to change doesn't mean you're being arrogant. It just means you don't be you believe in a different standard, or you don't you aren't convinced in the arguments for God. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong. And that's wrong why with I that. like to talk to people is to say, "Oh, I, I do believe there's enough evidence, and let's talk about this." Did you mean to say there's nothing wrong with that? Wrong with it, as in, if I have not been giving enough evidence for something, it's not wrong for me to not believe it. Now, so I do believe. Sometimes, not all the time, sometimes someone might be given enough evidence, yeah. but they just might not want to acknowledge it because of what it would mean for their lives. Yeah, like Satan. Not saying we all, we all know time. Satan believes it. He still rejects God or whatever, right? So, yeah, I'm with you. But if that's true, then how does a morally perfect God send me to hell or, or withhold paradise from me based on something that wasn't wrong? Well, he would hold you to, the, to your standards in that sense. He would judge you by what you see as right and wrong. So, like like you said, if uh, 
Well, you do the kind of. It's a gray zone of like, okay, if there's two kids drowning over there and one my kid drowning over there, I'd say my kid. Let's not use that, but let's do something kind of similar, but just clear to see which is right and wrong. Have you ever like done something you believe that like, you thought after you regretted doing because you said, okay, actually that that was actually bad. That was morally wrong yeah. against my code. I did it recently, actually. Um, <laughs> I had a, I, I did an episode. With, it was called I Was Visited by Aliens, and I had this guy on the show, and oh he was clearly, he clearly had some kind of mental issues, and okay, yeah. and I kind of knew it going in. I didn't know to the full extent until I was having the conversation, but even the other guy that was, you could you could hear in our voices, I don't remember what episode number it was, but it was, um, anyway, I Was Visited by Aliens, it's like like half a dozen back, but you okay. could hear in both our voices when I, when I played it back, I was like, oh my god, um, but both of us go, oh, no, <laughs> like, all right, uh, are you seeking help, man? Like, the guy was clearly out of his gourd. And I don't say that okay. in any disrespect to him, but but just that that probably wasn't responsible to try to use his uh, handicap to get attention for my show. You know what I mean? And I, I, I knew it. I knew it going in. And I even justified it to myself. And you're going to find funny how I did it. I justified it because I said, how is that different from a Christian or a Muslim or any of these no offense, but you know, wackos I have on, you know, like, like, but I mean, these yeah. people believe God created a world that inevitably went wrong. And then he had to send himself to fix it and die to himself, but not really die, but come back to save us from the thing that he made like that. It's, yeah. it, it's yeah. crazy talk <laughs> to me, but I say all that to say I did do that recently. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I, I, same here. Like I've done stuff like that too. So it's not like, like my point being that you yourself have acknowledged you've messed up or you've done something you think is wrong. Yeah. And it actually says in the Bible that when, like, in the end, what I believe to be the end, like judgment, God isn't going to hold you by his standard, by a law you don't know or don't follow. He's going to hold you by your conscience or the things you do believe are right and wrong. So in that sense, I think God is just in his decision afterwards. And his decision, like you said, how can he send me to hell forever? Let me just put a disclaimer. People have different views on this as Christians, but my view is that you wouldn't want to be in heaven. In heaven, you have to serve someone you don't like. You have to you have to do things you don't want to do. Heaven would be hell for you. Like mm -hmm. in that just an idea. Like for eternity, yeah. you have to submit to someone you don't respect. I would hate that. Like I have the hardest time doing that. Like that's do, that's do something you... I see as wrong in myself. I, it's hard for me to submit to someone I don't respect. I think that's for everyone, though. Do you, but... do you believe in a, a literal hell, fire, brimstone, gnashing of teeth, worms eating flesh, what have you? Well, I mean, I, I, I believe that's kind of figurative right, right. in there, okay. like imagery okay. to show that, you know, there's pain and suffering. But what I would say hell, what I've come to see it as through reading the Bible and just through talking to my friends about God, who God is, his characteristics and all that, uh, I see God as, I mean, I see hell as an absence of God's attributes, and I know you might see it different, but I see God's attributes as good, loving, kind, generous. So I think in hell, it's kind of his, the goodness taken away. Yeah. Like that benevolence. Yeah. So it's uh, kind of like okay. a self-inflicting hell where it's locked from the inside kind of idea. Yeah. Like that Robin Williams movie. Uh, what was it? Uh, what, what Dreams May Come. Did you ever see that one? I didn't see that one, no. Oh, you would love it, dude. It, it has so <laughs> much uh, Christian symbolism in it, but it's also kind of a, like a more modern modern yeah, take yeah. on it. It, it, it. And hell is like a psychological torture that you put yourself in. And heaven oh is like your own concept of heaven as well. You know, so it, the whole thing is, it, it, you got to check it out. It was like a 19, I don't know, probably 1995 or something like that. But yeah, yeah, yeah Robin Williams and, and watching it now after his death would probably be even like more powerful, you know, because you're thinking like the guy I'm watching who dies is dead. Like it, it anyway, I love the movie. Most people hated it. It didn't get very good reviews, oh, no. but all right. So you, you know think them, yeah. your, your concept of hell, I, I, I can dig that. I can dig your point about right and wrong not necessarily applying to me in the sense of accepting Christ my personal Savior, uh, simply because yeah. I haven't been presented with the evidence with a good reason to believe in God. So now that we get uh, your morals, my morals, heaven, hell, God, omnipresent, omniscient, uh, why should I believe it? And now I'm going to be held accountable, by the way, after you do this. So you're going to get me into <laughs> trouble, pal. Shoot. Oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> Don't tell Maybe me. I'll but no, really, what, what, what's a good reason that I should believe in God? Honestly, if you want to just cut right to the chase of not just a God, but Christian God, I think the resurrection is always the best bet, wouldn't you say? If that did, in fact, happen, 
uh, yes, historically. Yes, if it did in fact happen. And it happened according to the Bible, right? That one, yeah. that one's important too, because I, I'm not a mythicist in the sense of I, I don't believe a man named Christ existed or anything like that. To me, you might call me a mythicist. I, I think it's probably an amalgam of a lot of characters uh, throughout huh. that time, and I think oh, as as they yeah, continued, heard, yeah, sure, and and as they could, they they kept writing the story and passing it on verbally, it kind of created like a bigger, bigger story. That's my opinion, you know, not to get off topic, but assuming that I'm wrong about that and that the story of the resurrection is true, I would agree with you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. Well, I mean, that's a, that's a big give right off the start. Right? right with what you were saying there, that you think it, it's an amalgamation of different traditions and things like that, that it kind of just built up over the years because we can go like right close to his, uh, Jesus' death to have some insight on what the Christians believed. Is that kind of, would that help clear things up maybe? I think most every point that you would make in that regard, we would be in agreement about. Um, okay. And even the things that I wouldn't agree with you on, I would probably just say, I don't know, maybe it's a possibility. The, yeah. the problem comes in with the parts of the gospel being true, like he actually is the son of God, right? <laughs> so like that stuff. Well, okay. If someone says he's going to die and then be raised in three days and it actually happens and he follows – let's quote unquote prophecies from thousand years ago. And they follows the Jewish calendar that he had nothing to do with the set. I would say that's kind of evidence towards this guy's not quite the average Joe. Well, if I did it, would that be evidence that I'm God? If you were to prophesy your death and resurrection, it happened. And it just happened to align with this, your traditional calendar that was set a thousand years ago. I would want to talk to you about that. Yes. Yeah, I'd want to talk to that guy about that, too, but I wouldn't think he's yeah. God. I mean, the first thing you would think, if I told you that, and we even had a conversation, and I was very convincing, I, I, I went full David Koresh on you, right? You still <laughs> yeah. wouldn't believe I was God. You wouldn't start worshiping me. You wouldn't start praying to me before you go to bed at night. You would The, the thing you would do, and, and once again, accuse me of straw manning, if you will, but I, I don't think I'm wrong. The thing you okay. would do is you would try to find a way to explain this. You would say, how could this be? Maybe maybe the data I'm getting is wrong. Maybe the guy's tricking me. Uh, maybe he can raise himself from the dead. That doesn't mean he's God. Like, you would still yeah. maintain your current belief system regardless. I might challenge but, it a little bit, but I wouldn't replace God in your eyes. Yeah. I have a question. Do you listen to someone named uh, Matt Dillahunty? Yeah. Okay, okay. We're not I, I was listening to a anymore, couple of his but... debates earlier, and uh, it, it follows a similar line of uh, if something miraculous were to happen. Uh, one of the examples was if I were to have my head cut off and a bunch of people witnessed it in a building, and they all went outside and uh, gave their accounts to cops and told them what happened, and I walked out an hour later with my head back on. You could see the scars, and I came up to you, Robert, and I said, Robert, I've just come back from heaven. I've had a conversation with your grandmother, and she told me something you guys had talked about that I could never know. Your grandmother had passed away, of course. Hmm. I could never know this, but she's told me. Let me repeat this for you. Would you then say, this is God? Or would you say, I have to find out the natural explanation of how this happened? Um, I would definitely go with the latter. So you're, now my question follows. Is there anything... That would convince you that there is a God. Because I know a lot of people will say, why wouldn't God do this and make everyone believe? But by this standard, if a man had his head cut off and somehow got back on and he knew a conversation you had with your dead grandmother, mm -hmm. what could God do to convince you that he exists? I don't know. And I think, I think this is uh, something that I, I have a really hard time with. Uh, and not, I'm not saying you are, but saying this is something that I think everyone struggles with, is the idea that, one, uh, if... If you find something out, like you find something that you hold as a core belief is wrong, I think that's the hardest thing to change. Like what you said, if you did those crazy miracles and you said, like, I'm God, I would try to find a way around it. Like, I'm going to be honest, I would try to look into it as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying I'm better or anything. But I think this is a problem that humans have is that uh, even when a strong evidence convinces you of something else, you will try to look for a way out, especially when it comes to if this is true. My whole life that I've lived is wrong. For a Christian, Paul says that if the resurrection didn't happen, we are the most to be pitied, more so them because of all the torture they went through. But it, you know what I mean? It's a... I think you, you feel good about that answer that I gave you, 
like where you where you say what would convince you and i say i don't know and i think i think for you this line of inquiry is uh a, a bit of a victory in your eyes and and not not like you're, you're playing some game and you want to win you know or whatever but just i i think we have a different value system where yeah. faith is held in some kind of high regard and your ethos right where you would say i would agree re- yeah. yeah rejecting all that evidence is bad almost or 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 intellectually dishonest or something you know but something along the lines of, like that's a that's a a limitation on my end where i look at that and say that's skeptical that's good i i i teach those kinds of values to my children right when i see that in another man i respect that when i don't i look at that person as a tool as someone go <laughs> as yeah. uh, that is a weakness in them. And I think part of this, okay. well, and this isn't judgment to you, and not, this isn't necessarily judgment from you to me, but I think it's just we just have different value systems that causes a, a totally intrinsically different perspective about this topic. I, w- I would agree that we do come from different paradigms and worldviews here about what it's is... fascinating, though. If you think about it, it's kind of cool. Because here we, we can yeah. debate God and hell and whatever all day long, but when two guys just having this very honest, open conversation, at the end of the day, we revealed we both have, and I don't know if bias is the right word, but we both have a different value system that might contribute to our perspective, might contribute to why we believe or don't believe. Yeah, and I think this thing, even this thing goes across the board, not even just with beliefs, but everything, like cultures. You can go to a different country, and they'll do things you will find are bizarre. Yeah. But if you look into it, it's amazing, right? It's like they're unique, and that's what makes them great. But for me, I, I, this is what comes different, and maybe it's because the way I was raised, because I was raised in a house that was Christian. Uh, so it's kind of uh, – we talked about it a lot, but – I do believe there is some, there is good and is respectable to when you don't know that you can have faith in that answer. You can, like, I believe in God, one, uh, not just because I've been told God has done things in my life. We don't need to get, that could be another day, but I have had a miracle done on me, not by someone laying hands, but it was actually in the shower. So it'll be a fun story we can talk about later. But something that I would, I was struggling with my faith. I wasn't even praying or doing anything, but God did something. Now, that could have been a coincidence. It, it was a disease that was visible. It could have been a coincidence that I went away. It could be some natural explanation that I don't know yet, that maybe no one knows yet. But I choose to, I say that this is God, not just because of this, but because I have seen the truth across the Bible. I do believe that Jesus did resurrect through historical evidence, through the things I see today. And I do I know it sounds weird, especially for someone who doesn't believe that it's there, but I do believe I have a relationship with God. Uh, through all these things, I say I'm willing to have faith, even though the evidence does not 100%, maybe not even 90%, confirm it. But I have had enough convincing through what I be- believe to be the DED telling, like showing me through miracles or people talking, and uh, through historical evidence that I would say, despite the lack of complete and utter uh, knowing, mm-hmm. I will still say there is a God. Yeah. I know that was kind of jumbled, but do you get what no, I'm getting No, no, I wouldn't jumble at all. I, wouldn't jumble at all. I, I always find it kind of curious how Christians love saying what they believe. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like we all know it's that. It's true. I do like talking about God. <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah, but it's, it's funny. It's like, it's like everybody knows what you believe. <laughs> like, it's not, <laughs> we, like everything yeah. you're saying, we could say it. <laughs> for you but i think we've we reached a good benchmark and probably a good wrap-up place as well okay uh where we yeah. we're able to identify all judgment aside that we do have a different value system and that can contribute i would i would have two final questions one if our our value system is separated by requiring evidence and being skeptical and the other other side of that being uh, having faith which one serves you better uh, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd, I'd like you to answer that one. And then if you don't mind, before we wrap up, you got to tell us the shower story. But like the Reader's Digest oh. short version of it. I'm curious. I got to hear it. But yeah, okay, what's, what's, okay. what's really better? What's, I know what you mean. It sounds interesting when you say something happened in the shower. No matter what it is, you want to know. Yeah. But, but before <laughs> yeah. that, like, I just, if I take faith as being better, then I could have faith in the wrong thing. And it yes, wouldn't have yes. any kind of corrective measure in place because I would, it'd be faith, right? Well, okay. Well, if we're talking about faith, I would say... Atheists, I know you've heard this before. The way I see it, you can correct me. Atheists do have faith. 
they have faith that what they believe is right, even though it's not a hundred percent sure. Yeah, I mean, I think it's based off of probability more than faith. Though. Yeah, but no, but it's the same thing. It's like, well, I can't completely disprove God, and yet the belief has in God has been here for as long as me, as long as anyone we know, and a mm. lot longer. Yeah. So I'm taking some faith to say no. I there. I am not convinced because I know some atheists say no, there is no God, and I know others say, well, I'm not convinced yet. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, but no, I am not convinced, and I'm going to live my life accordingly to that. The fact that faith in God has existed for a long time is not all that convincing. It's, yeah, no, it's not a qualify. I, I know that. I'm just, I just put that out there. Mm. But yeah, but, why uh, not? Why not uh, go my route? Doesn't it seem like a more reliable path to go, and it has more uh, corrective measures within it? Whereas your route, I could have faith in Muhammad. That doesn't yeah. make that true. It's just faith. And that's why you have, to, like, like I said before, with either you or I or anyone else, you have to continue to question and criticize the things you believe to make sure they are actually right. Mm -hmm. Like that's why you're, like, I would say a Christian should read their Bible or should investigate it every day, because if you're wrong, your life kind of sucks. You're kind of <laughs> you wasted you're kinda it. Kind <laughs> of talking to something that isn't there, right? Yeah. Yeah, so like either way, no matter what you believe, I think you should always investigate it. Like you said, you could believe in Muhammad. The reason why I don't isn't just because Jesus is my superhero, but because I've looked into texts. I've talked to Muslims before, and I find them – I find it not just – not contradicting, but it just – it doesn't line up with what I have seen and I believe to be true. Not not about God or anything about that, but like about the resurrection them saying that that wasn't actually Jesus on the cross and going into that. I don't believe that is true. And if something in your holy book isn't true, I'm not willing to take the risk of believing in that mm. religion or ideology or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, and, and your worldview, if you believe the wrong thing, you're you're screwed. You, yeah, yeah, so there's a lot. <laughs> And like, mine, uh, it's, it's not really like yeah. that. Like I, I could, I could, even as an atheist, I can see some benefits of of following uh, certain culturally significant aspects of religion. But ultimately, I, I got nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> whereas, no, and that's, whereas you're, that's you're in true. big trouble if, uh, if, you, <laughs> if you get yeah. it wrong. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's why I don't like the, the idea of God as uh, you believe in Him to make you feel better. Because like really, you're not doing it because you actually think it's right. You're, you're doing, doing it because you're, because you're having a bad day. And uh, it's thinking that some omnipotent being will protect me kind of soothes me, right? Yeah. So, so would, yeah. It sounds like you're saying a lot of your value system is based on fear. No, of course. No, it's it's based on knowing what is like, – like you said, you like knowing what is right. Hmm. Same with me. I want to know how the world works. I want to know why it works. I want to know what's going on. Like I – this is just something that motivates me. I'm someone that loves learning. So why would I hold on to a truth that's wrong? That's fair. That's fair. All right. Give yeah, me the shower story, yeah. Luke, and then we got to hit it, brother. Yeah, of course. So some context to before I was in the shower without clothes on. I think you should know that. You know. Yeah. Uh, I had been a, I've been a Christian since I was a kid. So as a Christian at this point, uh, I also had a girlfriend, and uh, we had we started having sex and getting kind of far from God. We we're both Christians. I am loving uh, this story. Does she get in the shower? <laughs> she, oh, this will help. She was uh, – she was like before we started dating. She had she was really struggling. Uh, she was in an abusive relationship and things like that. They all were. And so it kind of when I I started just talking to her, become friends, and eventually you know we got together. And this is just something we started doing. And it happened for a while. And unlike like I know we're different, but for me when I'm when I'm apart from God, when I'm living a life that I don't see as fitting to being a what I call a child of God, mm -hmm. I was having a really hard time. Uh, in general, I suffer with depression. So like it's kind of just pounded on me and one day i was in the shower and i was thinking to myself like what where the frick am i right now what's going on and uh didn't pray or anything i kind of just i just started crying uh at this point in the relationship she had gotten a std from her abu like abuser um so i had contracted that as well uh and it was quite visible hurt a lot of scars and i was just i was just standing there in the shower I was looking down and I'm like, I, I can't do this anymore. This is, I can't do it. Like, there's no point. Uh, and right, right as I just stand there, uh, as the water went down, my, uh, the scars started leaving. What? Like, yeah, yeah. I, and I, you don't need to believe this, but like, I'm just saying what happened. They're, they're just gone. Hold on. And Your that could be some story? natural thing that I don't know of yet, that we haven't discovered yet. But for me, being a Christian, I said, I attribute that to God. This and one after takes that, the cake, that's man. actually something that made me, 
recover. I went back. I, I started going to Bible college after. I started uh, pushing a lot harder. And uh, God yeah, cured your herpes. Just, uh, that's what you're telling happened. me. God cured your herpes. Yeah. That's incredible. I am not going to make yeah. fun of you. I'm telling you, myself yeah, I, that. No, I, I don't usually tell people because it's, it's kind of embarrassing to have that, right? Are, are you sure but, uh, you want that on the air or do you want me to cut that out? No, I think it's important. You know, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. I would. I mean, honestly, like in my worldview, I think that it happened because God wanted it to happen. Kind of sucks, but oh, it's on God. there. No, that's the best one I've ever heard. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> I am not yeah, going no problem, to make man. fun of you. Th thanks for not being. Uh, yeah, and thanks for not make fun I of it. Right? I am not going to make fun of you. Telling so, so. <laughs> that's crazy. But either way, either way, okay. <sighs> Thanks, man. This has been a great talk. I've enjoyed it. I well, enjoyed it. Man, the... thanks for having me on. Like you didn't. I, I just met you once. I, well, I didn't meet you. I just talked to you. Well, I could tell you're a cool. Oh, and if anybody doesn't know, uh, this is Luke from. It was a uh, uh, what two episodes back. I think it might be three. Yeah. Where uh, Luke and his buddy Chris Christensen were arguing about dead babies and COVID masks. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good time. Have a great day, sir. All right, you too, man. God bless. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Thank you to Luke. Thank you to Dave Blair at DaveBlairMusic.com. Thank you to Feedspot.com for the top 10 atheist podcast classification for the Right to Reason podcast. Find their link in today's show notes. Thank you to our patrons. You can support this broadcast at Patreon.com forward slash right and learn more at the Right to Reason.com next week. We'll hear from a liberal and a conservative both playing selected news audio clips and arguing why they think the other side's media is fake news. Spoiler alert. They're probably both right, but one's more right than the other. I'll let you decide between now and then. Remember that you have the right to reason. Oh.